The day after this video goes up, there will be a total solar eclipse exclusively in the United States, the first since 1979, but what makes them so rare and important? Okay, first, solar eclipses versus lunar eclipses. They are very different things, and it's important to get the difference right. A lunar eclipse, which is also a rare event, is actually the exact opposite of a solar eclipse, when the moon goes directly behind the Earth into an area of the Earth's shadow called the umbra. In a sense, X eclipse just refers to what is being covered up. Lunar eclipses cover up the moon, solar eclipses cover up the sun, and night covers up anyone in the night side of the Earth. So when Michael from Vsauce 1 said that night was really a U eclipse, he was completely right. Okay cool, so why are lunar eclipses so rare and special though? Wouldn't the moon block the sun whenever it goes directly between the Earth and the sun? I mean, the sun's 400 times larger and 400 times further away. Well, yes, that is exactly how it works, but that doesn't actually happen very much. Put it this way, it's the universe. It's a bit more complicated than that. This is because the moon has an orbit that is inclined by 5.1 degrees, making eclipses actually very rare. The way this does happen is because there are nodes where the moon crosses the same plane of orbit as the sun relative to the Earth, and can therefore block the light coming in from the sun but only in certain parts of the Earth's orbit, where the nodes themselves also come directly in between the Earth and the Sun. But even then, there are further complications. The Moon's orbit has an eccentricity of 0.0549, meaning that its orbit is not completely circular, and it can only cover the Sun when it's closer and therefore appears bigger to Earthly observers. So basically, solar eclipses only happen when the Moon is on a node on the same plane as the Sun that node is directly in between the Earth and the Sun, and it's near the lunar perigee, or it's the lowest point in the Moon's orbit, and the Moon happens to be in all those correct positions. Only then can it cover up the Sun, and if it's at a higher point, like near the apogee, it will only be a partial eclipse, not nearly enough to see the Sun's corona. The key thing is, while lunar eclipses can be viewed by anyone on the night side of the planet, total solar eclipses, while actually happening every 18 months, can only be viewed by a sliver of the Earth's daytime surface. Since a lot of key factors have to be in play for a solar eclipse, the moon has to be in the right place at the right time for a few minutes of total darkness for half a percent of the Earth's surface, not even going around the whole circumference of the planet, as the moon will eventually cross back out of the sun's way before it hits Africa, having swooped over to the US and having a good look at the state of affairs here in the States, which is, say, pretty f terrified. It will finally finish its journey just southwest of Cape Verde, on approach to Guinea, but only having traversed one country. But if you live in some place like Asia or someplace else on the other side of the world, don't worry, you'll be cast in the darkness at the same time, but for a different, less remarkable reason. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video, which will soon be rendered irrelevant in 600 million years when total solar eclipses are no longer possible. Anyway, please be sure to like and subscribe, and to my American subscribers, will you be seeing the eclipse tomorrow? I'll be able to see a partial eclipse from here in Portland, Oregon, but to see the eclipse, I'd have to go to Salem, and yeah, Salem. Yeah. Anyways, I'll see you on Sunday.